Oh, jeez. Oh. Yeah. Oh. Oh. So if you don't already know, I've been having some power issues. Which really is kind of stemmed from using an old power supply in a new build. Which really, I mean, it wasn't terribly old. The power supply I was using, I bought in 2015. So, I mean, four years on a power supply, really not that big of a deal. I mean, let's just be real. But, that doesn't mean that I don't have to fix it or address the issue. Now, a normal person would probably see this as a, a chance to go out, find the appropriate replacement part to fix the problem. Uh, something that would fit what he or she is trying to do. For example, right now I have a 1000 watt power supply. It's built by EVGA. This is in the system as we speak. But I have a 7940X overclocked 4.1, a 2080 Ti, a 1080 Ti, and 128 gigabytes of RAM. For the longest time, this power supply was able to handle everything perfectly. But now it gets to 629 watts worth of power draw and it just powers down. Just done. Now I know this doesn't have any thermal issues and I know it's nothing to do with the overclock because I turn all the overclocking off during my troubleshooting. And of course I was monitoring all of my thermals to make sure there wasn't anything causing it to shut down. But the kicker is, is that it only shuts down when there's two video cards in there both at the same time. I've ran tests with each single video card and I was not able to get it to shut down with just one card. Doesn't matter which one, both of them by themselves do not shut down only when there's two of them. To do the test, I had to do things like, you know, encoding a video, playing Rocket League, uh, recording the game screen, all at the same time, basically really stressing the system in order for it to actually shut down on me. But it would consistently shut down. So this takes me back to the normal person, what a normal person would do. And I really don't think that a normal person would go out and buy a 1600 watt power supply to power their computer when when really they like were hitting like 650 tops. I mean, this is like a thousand watts more than what I technically literally need in my computer. But at least it won't shut down. And the power plug on this thing, wow. I mean, this thing is just, this thing is beefy. Like, look at this thing. This, this is a power cable. I feel like this damn power supply could power my house. Seriously. Okay, maybe not seriously, but it feels like it could. Now, the biggest complaint that I have with all of this is that, I, I mean, it's not perfect cable management, but I definitely spent a lot of time trying to get it to at least look respectable. And now I have to redo that. <sighs> You know, just uh, first world problems, seriously. And then of course we have to consider the size. I mean, look at the size of this power supply, right? It's a normal 1000 watt power supply. And then look at the size of this. Like this is a solid, I don't know, two inches bigger. Like this is a big power supply. I was gonna to try to use all of the same cables, but EVGA themselves said that that would be a bad idea. So, actually I think I need to do a little bit of cleaning. Looks like it's dirty. You know, things actually used to look a lot better back here, but when I started adding uh, RGB fans, everything just kind of got complicated and busy. So, it just does not look as good as I originally tried to build it to be. And these things...
EVGA told me that I need to use the power supply cables that came with the power supply. They said that, you know, they're not compatible. But I think that I am way too lazy to rerun all these power cables. I think just the main cable here is different. And the rest of them, I think they're good. I think they're all the same. So I think I'm gonna get away with just swapping the main line. So, I, <laughs> I'm done. Eh, kinda. The thing is, is that there are a few cables that I, I, I inspected myself and I just noticed that they were different enough, at least to be noticeable, that I should change them out. So the VGA cables, those were different, decided to swap those out. The dedicated CPU lines, the ones that go up near the VRM, VRMs, those were different as well, so I changed those. And of course, the main motherboard power connection, I changed that one out too. And I mean, if you really think about it, those are like the primary cables, so more or less, I changed out most of the cables in there, with the exception, of course, of the SATA cables and the, like the extra accessory power cables. Now, that was a ton of wiring to get those in there originally, so I really did not want to have to wire all of those. I mean, RGB lighting is just kind of crap, so or at least I'm crap at RGB lighting, wiring. And technically, I got the case on technically, but it's bulging. I mean, it, it is a noticeable bulge on the side of this computer. And part of me cares, and the other part of me says, eh, not really, don't care. I, it, if it works, it boots up, that part of the case will not be visible to me, and I'm not doing a build video per se, so like I've already done this build video, I've already tried to make it look good, and I think I'm just gonna worry about wiring and cable management for the next round. I mean, this thing is old, you know, it's an old 7940X. Uh, it probably deserves to be upgraded whenever the next round of enthusiast grade CPUs come out from Intel. So, you know, I'll just wait to upgrade it. And whenever I upgrade it, then I'll worry about cable management then, if it works. If it doesn't work, then my computer will blow up and I will be upgrading sooner than I thought, so. Yeah. One thing that I did take note of that I don't know if I got on camera or not, like I said before, the VGA cables were different. Um, this one right here, basically it has a cable here that has the two connections on one cable, but the 2080 Ti uses two four pin connectors and the 1080 Ti uses a four pin and a three pin. So the cables that came with it that has the two connections on there worked perfectly for the 1080, but because it only had a four and a three on the cable itself, I could not use it with the 2080 Ti. You know, two cables powering two graphics cards to three cables powering two graphics cards because the 2080 Ti required a dedicated line for each one of those four pins just because of the cables that were provided, which feeds into the whole, like, why did I switch out the, the VGA cables? Because that was a big difference and I probably could have fit them in there, but I don't know. I kind of feel like there was something there that, you know, warranted me using the new cables. So I did. But now I'm gonna go hook this up. I already put in the plug-in thing in there. So that plug-in is humongous. It's crazy. Oh. 
including that new monster of a power cable in the back. Yes, I know it's a rat's nest, but at this point, I just want my computer back up and running. So, uh oh, okay. Oh, that's a good sign. It didn't fry. That's good. That's good. Yes. Looks like everything's booting up like it should. So, yeah. Overall, though, it proves that my old power supply is just bunk. I mean, this thing is 1,000 watts. It hits 629 watts, and it goes bad. So I don't know if that's because it's hit some kind of like degradation of ability and maybe something in it's shorting out or maybe it's overheating. But I did blow it out and it didn't really seem to put out that much uh, dust or anything like that. So although I did clean it, technically it really just wasn't that dirty. So I'm not really sure why it went out or why it started having issues. But either way, now that I got the new 1600 watt in there, it is running like a champ. I was able to crank my overclocking back up to 4.1 gigahertz. I was able to, you know, record the screen with OBS, play Rocket League and Grand Theft Auto, actually Rocket League or Grand Theft Auto, uh, while recording the screen and encoding a video with Adobe Media Encoder. So those three tasks were always the most consistent when it came to crashing this power supply when I was trying to run both graphics cards at the same time. But now that I got the new power supply in there, I played for over an hour. I was messing around with different things and I, I ran stress test on top of everything and nothing. I mean, it chugs down and it gets slowed down by all the stuff that I'm doing if I'm running the synthetic test on top of all three of those other things, but it still keeps running and it doesn't just power down. So obviously I had an issue with my power supply and the only solution was to upgrade to a 1600 watt power supply to fix my issue. So. Yeah, so maybe I didn't need to, I don't know, maybe I didn't need to hit a freaking fly with a sledgehammer to solve the problem, but either way, I mean, this should last me for a long time. But this does bring up an interesting question, right? This is supposed to have seven years, seven year warranty on it through EBGA. So now, now I'm gonna contact them. I'm gonna say, look, I had this, it was crashing on me and shutting down on me and it wasn't working and it was only pulling 630 watts at the time of crash so i want a warranty and i think i remember reading online that you have to pay to ship it over to switzerland or something in order to get that warranty exchange done but it is going to be interesting to see how that warranty process goes because i've actually never swapped out a power supply before i've only ever swapped out a hard drive either way I would have needed to upgrade my power supply anyways because really this is the only one that I have in my house capable of running my current computer with a dual graphics card in it. When I mean, it's it draws some power, so I really needed another power supply either way. But since this is a thousand watts, I just I don't want to give that up. So uh, if I can get a replacement, like a warranty exchange on this, then I'll have a thousand watt power supply to use for whatever in the future. So guys, thank you for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed this random thing that I did today. And if not, let me know down below. As always, like and subscribe before you leave. Thank you for watching and have yourself a good night.